Hey, I'm Carrie. This is Dale. Hey, y'all. It's been a while <laughs> since I've done one of these. I might be a little rusty. So. <laughs> yeah, but today we thought it would be a really fun opportunity to meet with you all and show you some of the new features on the app and show you how I'm going through and using it to plan and get started with our garden. Because I'm, I'm definitely using it a lot right now, especially seed starting indoors. It really helps me out. Yeah, so one of the reasons y'all haven't seen me on this channel as much is because we've been very busy working on the app in the background. So there's a lot of stuff that we've done and a lot of stuff that's going to be rolling out really soon. And we wanted to take some time to, one, show you what we've done show you um, how we envision it being used, obviously with software. Um, that's one of the cool things about software is y'all oftentimes come up with ways that we didn't think about. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to do this was to be able to have a real chat with y'all and talk about some of the changes we've made, talk about some of the improvements we'd like to make and see what y'all think about all of that. Yeah. So perfect time than lunchtime, right? Yep. Go through and, <laughs> and go through the app. <laughs> All right. So we've got the app that we can pull up right here, the web version of the app. So that's what you're seeing right here. And this is available at app.seedtospoon.net. So this is the same version of the app that you uh, have on your phone from the App Store or from the Google Play Store. This is just a web version that you can use anywhere. So it's handy, uh, especially if you're entering a lot of data. I like having access to my full keyboard. So, and like right now, I'm showing you the mobile view. But if you go to this on a like a full size web page, it'll everything will be bigger, and it's it's nice for being able to enter a lot of data. So, this is what we're going to be using to show um, everything that we wanted to show today. So, we thought the best way to show you how to use the app is for is just to use the app. We have some things that we need to log and uh, some things we've been doing with our garden. So we thought we would start by showing you first how we know that. So one thing that we've added recently is a new label here on the plants list. So as you're scrolling the list, there's labels for plant outside now or start indoors now. And we also have a new feature in the My Garden tab here that is the Task tab that shows you all this stuff grouped together. So see if I collapse all these, I've got, here's all the different categories of things that we've got coming up. So we've got some that we're gonna be planting soon. We've got some that we need to start indoors now, and then some that we need to plant outside now. So all of this is calculated based on your nearest weather station. So we find the weather station that's closest to you and calculate what the safest last freeze date is these dates are pretty safe we try and um, keep you from from getting bit by a late frost so it calculates based off of that and then shows you all of that information here so right now here in zone seven in oklahoma we have all of these things that we can start indoors and carrie's been doing a lot of that yes, you want to I talk have. about what all you've been planting <laughs> this week Oh, man. Well, I'm still planting out some of our cool crops right now. So I'm still doing things like Swiss chard and I let's see, I did Swiss chard, mustard, kale, things like that. Um, I already have a bunch of broccoli and cabbage, cauliflower, all of that going. And then I also started a lot of our warm season. So tomatoes, peppers. And then I also if you guys are following along on our salsa challenge, I also did all of those this week too, which was exciting. So all of the plants that I'm going to need for my salsa garden. So the tomatoes, peppers, and then also some cilantro and chives and basil, green onions, all of that. I, I went ahead and started this week too. So let's talk for a moment about this new task view and how it works. Because we did not want to give you reminders for every single plant. We thought that would be annoying for a lot of people. Um, and the way that we thought we would handle this is by taking the favorites feature that you may have been familiar with in the past and renaming it to Growbox. And Growbox may not be the best name for this. We're like, we're, if you have better ideas for what we call this, like, <laughs> I cannot tell y'all how many hours we have spent brainstorming 
this concept, but the basic idea is you have this box of things you want to grow. So the way we thought of this was kind of like a seed box, because that's what we have. It's like a little box of all of our seeds that are organized. So think of this grow box like that. And when you go into the grow box, you can um, choose what all you want to grow. So as you're scrolling through here, there's an update coming out this week that's going to make this a little more like apparent what's selected and what isn't. But you can see like av as you select something, this little icon changes down to the bottom. And then down here, you can see all the things that are in your grow box. So I went through and check marked or like and made sure everything in my grow box was everything I'm planning on growing this season or I already have out in my garden too. So I went ahead and did all that. So that way I got notifications and reminders all about that. So if you aren't sure where to start and you go into Manage Grow Box for the first time, we're going to prompt you saying, hey, do you want us to add some of the, the 16 most popular plants? And and um, yeah, oh, I see a question that came up. Sorry, our, the window with, with this is very small. So I don't know how long that's been up there, Kim. But yes, Grow Box is basically your wish list. Yeah. So that's a perfect concept. Um, the reason why, so I'm going to like explain all the reasons why we haven't named it different things as they come up. Um, so the reason why we didn't go with wish list is because if you've already grown it, then it's on your wish list anymore. It's like something you have grown, but you want to keep getting notifications about when to plan it. So yeah. that's why we didn't call it wish list. But yes, that's basically what it is. So once you have plants that are in your grow box, that's what populates all of this. So one of the cool things that we added into this is this select a date. So by default, it's going to be planning for today. But maybe you're looking at like, okay, uh, I, I know that I'm going to have a weekend, um, April, uh, the April 1st weekend where, you know, I, I'm not going to have any kids soccer games. I have to go through the whole weekend. So that's my weekend to garden. This is how we have to run our life is like, when do yeah. we not have soccer games all weekend? <laughs> so we know that this is going to be the weekend that we want to plant. So I can come in here and choose April 1st. And then now all of this changes to show you what all you can do April 1st. So this will give you an idea of, okay, here are the things that I'm going to be able to plant outside April 1st. So just want to show that little feature as well. Um, I think that's something that's going to be really nice for planting, but I'm going to switch us back to today. So we're back on today. And these are all the things that, that we can do. So let's go ahead and start logging one of the, the seeds that we planted. So we have some tomatoes. We have a tomato. Yeah, over here. I, I planted a lot of tomatoes and peppers. Like I, I filled up our biodome with, so I made, uh, I've made a biodome with just bush tomatoes and a biodome with just vining tomatoes. And I did the same with peppers. I did one for <laughs> our bell and banana peppers and then one for our hot peppers. We like our warm season crops. So, yeah. All right, so the first one we have is a Parks have, Whopper yeah. tomato. So that's a vining tomato. So when I tap on tomatoes vine, it pops this up asking me uh, what we want to do with that. So this is a change we just made uh, a week ago when you tapped on it. It would just automatically log a plant in your garden. But we wanted to make this a little more clear what's happening. So now when you tap on one of these plants, you can either add tomatoes to your garden or you can view the details on them uh, on that plant. We're going to go ahead and add it to the garden. And then this will take us into this view where we can actually log that plant. So starting method, we're going to choose indoor for this one. Amount planted. How many seeds, how many rows did you do in that bio? Dome? I did three. Okay. Well, it was three of them that I planted. And it was actually yesterday, so we can change the planting date to yesterday oh, cool. as well, too. So on this amount planted, this uh, this can be used however you want. Um, this is a, a something you can type anything you want into. So you can do something like that if you want. You can, you can do whatever you want with that field. Location. Well, we're going to actually do location biodome on this one in our shop because we have our seed starting area out in like our garage shop area. We have like a lot of videos that show all that if you're interested in it, but that's where it is. And the variety is the Whopper. Choose. So in here, we've got all the different varieties that we have in our store. And this one is the Whopper. Uh, there's going to be an update this week that fixes this, these being duplicated. Uh, there's different packet sizes for each one, and those are showing. So we're fixing that. But So we chose the Whopper here. And then the cool thing about this is this will show you some estimates for when you should expect that seed to sprout. So sometime between the 14th and the 21st is when it should sprout. We're using a, uh, a heat map 
which will help with germination times. It'll make it germinate a lot faster. So we'll probably be looking at about the 14th for that beginning to sprout. Once it does, we'll tap this Marcus sprouted. Um, maybe in later in the video, we'll, we'll pretend it's a week in the future and we'll do that. But this will also give us a projection of when we might be able to see our first harvest as well. You know what? I don't think I've marked my Swiss chart as, as sprouted. And okay. It, it okay. has sprouted in the other room. I didn't notice that this morning. So. Okay. Then we'll do that. We'll yeah. do that. Um, some other features we have in here are the plant log. So if you come in here, you can add different events that may have happened with this. So when you, uh, so when you like uh, mark a sprouted, it actually creates one of these events for you for sprouted. But you can mark if you watered or fertilized, if there's a pest, anything like that, you can log it in there. And then if there's any notes you want to have on the plant, you can take them here. You can add photos to track that, that uh, plant's progress along, along the way as well. Let me pop over here to questions and just make sure there's nothing we need to answer here. Okay, Patty says, does not work when it puts it and takes out a grow box, does not open the window you are showing. Patty, could you email us a screenshot at info at seedtospoon.net and Andrew can help you out. Andrew's on this live stream as well. He's helping out in the chat. And um, it if might you... be the date thing. The, oh, the Cause date? Because that, that's only. Okay. Yeah. The change date that was back in the past few. Yeah. So that that's is a I'm premium assuming. feature. That might be what's going on. So email that over to Andrew and he'll be able to help you out on that. Um, got a question from Jessica about whether or not we're going to be adding flower varieties into the app. Uh, yes. So the way that we've gone about adding plants into the app, uh, there's a lot of apps out there. And um, I think there's different approaches to building an app like this. You can gather a lot of data um, and hope that it's right. Or you can kind of hand roll data by like hand enter it and do the research and have like a, a filtered list. And that's the route we've chosen to go. So any plant that is in the app is something that we have researched. We have made sure that the data is accurate. Uh, most of these we have grown on our own. Like we, we know a lot about, about these plants and we know we can give you good data. Um, we want to continue to add plants in that light and especially things that are edible or things that are medicinal. So that's going to be as we continue to add plants. But one really cool thing that we added, um, not to, I guess October of last year we added this, is the ability to add custom plants. So if you have something that you want to keep track of. There's this add custom plant down here in the very bottom right. If you click on it, you can add your own plant. So if there is a flower that you want to log or keep track of, then you can enter all the information in here for it. You can, um, if you enter in like the number of weeks before frost and all this kind of stuff, then all of the calculations for planting dates will be done for you with that plant. So we realized that it wasn't gonna be possible for us to keep up with adding every single plant in the way that we want to be able to do it accurately. And we thought the best way to handle that was to give you the capability of creating those on your own. So hopefully that, that helps out. Okay, so let's go back into where we were. So we just logged that tomato plant. So let me show you where it goes after it's logged because within this My Garden tab, we've got a couple different uh, sections in here. We've got our task view that you've seen, and then we have this growing tab. So this growing tab is showing you everything that you have logged that is in your garden. If it's in growing, it means it is growing somewhere for you, whether that's indoors or outdoors. We're going to have some new cool filters coming soon that let you kind of split things up between indoors and outdoors. But for now, it shows you everything that you have in your garden. And you can, you can create multiple gardens. So you see, like, right now we're looking at our front yard garden. If I click on this Manage Gardens... Now we can see all these other gardens we've had. You can see we've done some testing with this account with syncing. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got the sync test garden in here. But you could create whatever you wanted with these. So maybe you want to have your indoor seed starting area as a garden. Or, um, you know, this is one of the areas we, we really want to see from y'all. How are y'all using this? How, how, um, how are y'all organizing your gardens? This is something if, you know, if, if you could share us some feedback and sending us emails or commenting on on any of our social posts with this kind of information that stuff we would love to see that helps us um better understand how to craft these features to better suit you so the way that we're using it in our garden is we have the different garden areas kind of split up and you can see here's the tomato right here that we just logged nope that's not the one we just logged where's the one we just logged 
I don't know if you pressed. Did I not save it? I don't think you did. Oh, because you you got you got excited about the custom plant and you clicked out of the screen. <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> All right. I goof. I told you I'd be rusty. Um. And this was the Whopper. Yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. Now we save it. There it is. Okay. So we're in the growing tab. That was good because it just reinforces how to do it. So it's almost <laughs> like I'm going to say I planned it. I'm not... <laughs> okay. So there here's that tomato vine. We've got it here. All right. So Carrie mentioned that our Swiss chard sprouted. So where's the Swiss chard? Oh, you know what? I haven't even. You see, I'm I'm behind on doing it. Okay. Kohlrabi has. Did the I? Kohlrabi sprouted. Did I mark that yet? I may have. Let's see. All right. So let's go into our kohlrabi. I already marked that it sprouted. So yep. that that part disappeared. So you can see when we come into plant log, it's got the sprouted event, and we can know that, that it's there. And then this, this is our projected first harvest. So one thing I want to talk about is notifications, because this is something that's going to be rolling out over the next few weeks, is you're going to start getting notifications that are tied to this data in here. So when it's when you have things that are ready to be started indoors, or outdoors, you're going to get notifications around that. Now, this is something that we really want your help in working through, making sure we're doing it the right way, because one of the reasons we haven't rolled out notifications before now is we do not want to be annoying with notifications. I don't like it when apps are sending me notifications all the time that are not useful to me, and we don't want our app to be like that either. So We want it to be helpful. Exactly. So what we have determined we're going to do for now is we're going to we're going to group up the notifications you need to get and we're going to send them three times a week. So once at the beginning of the week, kind of giving you an idea of what's coming up once, you know, around Thursday to remind you, hey, you've got some stuff going on in the garden. And then another one on Saturday, whenever most of us have the right time to be in the garden anyway. But Anyway, that's how we're going to be sending you, sending you notifications. Those are going to be rolling out over the next few weeks, and that's going to pull you into here to show you what you have going. We also are going to be putting in weather notifications over the next few weeks as well. So that's going to send you alerts when there's going to be a freeze or like a, a high temperature event. Those are the two things we're looking at right now. But again, something else we would love to get information from you all on is other notifications you'd like to see, obviously around things like fertilizing and all that. But, you know, if we send you a notification for every plant that needs to be fertilized for a garden like ours, that would be a lot of notifications <laughs> and it would get annoying. So we're trying to find the balance of sending the right amount, but not overloading you and not being annoying. So please help us out through this, work well, with this. Just saying you have plants that need to be fertilized right now. And then it takes you into here or into yeah. somewhere yeah. to show you the list of them that's what we're shooting for is something like that so that that's what we've built and um we'd love to hear your feedback on it as it uh as it starts to roll out so we've got a uh, a question here what is the best way to log a seed started in an outdoor greenhouse we need to add an option in there for greenhouse in that log so um Thank you, Kim, for your feedback. That is something that we will prioritize, and it's something that we should be able to add pretty easy. So we will add in whenever you add broccoli or something to your garden. We will add starting method as uh, as greenhouse. For now, what you could do is make the location greenhouse, though, um, or you could also just have a garden um, that is like greenhouse that's under here. So like front yard is one of our gardens greenhouse could be another garden and we have a, an, an update that's rolling out this week that will allow you or that may have been in the one that went out we have so many updates coming out and things we've been working on it's hard <laughs> to keep track of, of where where everything is but it's going to allow you to move a plant from one garden to another let's just see if it's in here nope not in here yet so inside of this plant actions i don't know if y'all notice in here this dot dot dots over here um, we're going to add an option in here. It's, it's, it's in there. It just hasn't rolled out yet for move to another garden and it'll allow you to move that plant over. So if it was in a greenhouse and you moved it outside, then you can move it into that other garden area. Again, we're trying to build this app to be flexible to account for all the different ways of using it, because I know all of you are using it in different ways. And, um, yeah, and everybody's I think completely different. Yeah. Winter sowing. Yes. We will add, we'll add that one in as well. Um, well, well, let's think about one. 
I might have to circle back with you on winter sewing. Let me think through that one a little bit. Um, Cause that's more of a method. It's not necessarily a location. It's let me think through that one. Um, okay. So where, so we've talked about adding events. We've talked about um, the task view. Do you want to show them Growbot? Let's go to Growbot. Because so, so I will say Growbot did help plan, especially for a few things. So the questions I like to ask Growbot are things like, "What are what what's some food that I can grow in the shade?" Um, so like different areas like that, it kind of helps me plan out things I can plant in different areas. So it just give, gives me some ideas that I really like. So Growbot is an AI gardening tool that we built and released um, when we released now about a month ago. Probably, um, yeah. Built on top of, if you've seen some of the headlines about chat GPT and all the advancements in AI, uh, this is built on top of that. So uh, we are geeks. We are super into all this stuff. And as soon as we saw some of the capabilities of the new AI systems, we knew we had to jump on it. And this is the first iteration of what we uh, like to call your, your AI garden helper. So we've trained this to answer questions as accurately as possible. I know you've seen some of the headlines about it giving out wrong data. We've tried to compensate for that by telling it, please only answer if you for sure know the answer. Mr. Grobot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we've, we've um, spent a lot of time um, trying to make the best AI tool possible. And that's what we feel like Growbot is. So uh, again, like Carrie said, it allows you to answer questions. You can ask this anything you want um, and it'll give you the, the best answer it can come up with. And we've spent a lot of time testing it and it's it's pretty rock solid and, and it's answers. So, so this is Growbot. This rolled out um, about a month ago. Um, this is one of our premium features. This this costs us to use. So like whenever you answer a question, we have to use the we have to pass it up to the the server. That costs us money. So this is one of the paid features that um, you get unlimited questions for less than a packet of seeds per month. So uh, I see a question from BJ. Is this Chat GPT? It is built um, with the same server technology as Chat GPT. It, we're calling their API. If that means anything to you. Um, but we've done some work in how we're calling it to better craft it, to be able to answer gardening questions and to, uh, we don't pass up anything personally identifying about you, but we do pass up, um, like your closest weather station, that type of stuff. So it can better calculate. So if you ask it, what tomatoes can I grow in my area? Things like that. It'll be able to better answer things like that as well. So this is based on the same thing as chat GPT. It's not chat GPT, but it's using the same underlying technology. Um, okay, let's look around and see what else have we added. I know there's been a lot of changes and let's kind of just go back and show you some of the things in the app too. too. I don't think yeah. So let's talk about filters. Anything. So filters in the past, you can only do one at a time and we now have it to where you can do multiples. So like, say I want to filter for something that's in my grow box and something that tolerates shade. Well, I can filter that down and now I can see here are some plants that I have in my grow box that can tolerate some shade. So you can also clear these um, like this. So I could clear down to clear the filters off and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you aren't as familiar with our app, I kind of just want to show you around a minute. So if you tap on a plant, so like basil, for example, if you tap on this plant here, this takes you into the details view. And another feature that we've added uh, fairly recently is this calendar view. So this gives you a graphical representation of the data down here. So you can see this is when you start indoors and this is whenever you plant outside. And as you continue to scroll, it gives you all the information about, um, about the different plants that you've, about, about that plant. And then if you come up to types, you can see the different varieties that we have for that. You can buy seeds directly through here. Um, we're partnering with Park Seed to to provide, they are super high quality seeds. They do better germination testing than anyone else I've seen. And um, you know, you're getting high quality seeds if you're buying them through here. That's one of the things that we liked most about Park Seed when we partner with them was we knew we could stand behind the quality of the seeds. And then in the friends tab, this shows you the companions that grow well next to that plant and the things that do not. And you can see the pests that attack that plant. 
If you tap on that pest, it'll show you how to handle it. And uh, we've also got a lot of different blog posts and videos. And I think blog posts doesn't work in the web out there, but videos do. Um, so pulls on down all the videos we've made. We've been we started our YouTube channel in 2016. Um, we've been making videos ever since. So it, everything that we've made over since that time has been categorized and tagged based on the plant, and it all pulls into there. So let me come over here and catch up on some questions. I see uh, so we've got quite a few here. Let me see if there's anything that we need to address. Okay, so they would love to keep track of seed collection. So this is what we hope Growbox to be. So the I guess we could probably... So I guess what you're wanting to do is be able to keep track of the individual varieties in your seed collection, not just the plant. So that's a very good idea. And I need to think through the best way to handle that. Um, I think there's a way that we might be able to do this with Growbox potentially. Um, but I don't know. Let me think through. That's a very good suggestion. I like that. Uh, Jessica has a great idea too for a, a map. This has been the dream since we first released yeah. released our app was to have that. It's um, it's difficult to do. Um, we're going to do it one day, but it's one of those things that it's going to take uh, quite a few months of dedicated development effort to do. And I think there's some ways that we might be able to do it uh, a little different than we had originally designed. So it's it's something that's on our list. I'm hoping that it's something we can get to this year. And um, when we do it, it'll be cool. I can tell you that. So I, we've got some really cool ideas about how to leverage some of these new AI technologies to help with this as well. Um, we've got some really cool ideas. So definitely something that we, we want to do for sure. Uh, good suggestion here around creating. So right now, whenever you go into your locations and uh, so you, you're going here right now, this is just a text box. I think this suggestion is to make this something that you can maybe set up locations and then link them and, and do that kind of thing. We've talked about doing that. I, I, I didn't do it in the past because we didn't want to place too many restrictions on like you have to like create a location before you can, but I think there's ways we can we can handle that. So that that's a that's a good suggestion. Something we'll definitely take into consideration. Yeah, I like that. And then filtering down to your locate to locations that way. Yeah this this is a this is a great idea too. So um, I believe what you're saying is instead of having to switch gardens, you want to be able to see all the plants across all the gardens. So I think what we could do is add in like a all plants option in here that kind of lets you see all of them. Um, I got to make sure my developers aren't freaking out at me on that one because there might be some architecture things that make that difficult. But um, I think that's something we can do. That's a good suggestion. Andrew, I hope you're writing these down. We've got to come back and rewatch this and write them down. <laughs> that's a great suggestion. Okay, so here's in my garden. Is there a way to separate the different varieties in the, the dome garden? So, um, yes, if you come in here and you see, so like this cabbage, for example, it groups them all together. So I've got four cabbage plants. They're all grouped together under here. But when you tap on that, then this will list out the different ones that you have. So this will be the location. So it's the name of the plant, the location, and then the variety. And then you can see the date that it was planted and the harvest date here as well. Hopefully that answers answers the question that you had there. I think that I think that does. Okay. Carrie, what else have we added? You know what? Something else we added is this What's New tab <laughs> that shows oh, yeah. you the new stuff that we've added. So now whenever there's an update, you should see this automatically pop up. That kind of shows you uh, what all is in this, um, this update. So we've covered everything that's in there, at least. Yeah. There have been so many little things that we've fixed, too, and there's little tweaks that we've made and we're continuing to roll out. Um, this calendar view is also something that's relatively new. I think at the end of the year we added it, but it's, uh, shows you a graphical view of when to start indoors outside. And then this doesn't like the heat. We're working through the best way to handle this because some plants like beans can be planted in the summer unless it gets above like 94 degrees ish is really, it kind of depends on each plant, but here in Oklahoma, that's about what, when we have to cut over to Southern peas instead of, uh, traditional beans. 
So um, what we're going to be doing is hooking into weather data to make this uh, even better. And then instead of saying doesn't like heat in the task view, you know, we're going to um, over here, it's going to better illustrate if it's safe to plan it outside now based on weather. So there'll be like a little alert or something kind of showing you like it's okay, but you need to take extra consideration yeah. because of the heat. So yeah, I like that. That's something else that we're working on as, as well. Um, all the things I've shown you today are available now. They are all out in, it's all in, in the app store on the Google play store. Um, the notifications and other things I mentioned are going to be rolling out over the next few weeks. We are testing them now. Um, notifications are one of those things you do not want to mess up on because that would be a bad day if I accidentally sent y'all a bunch of notifications that were wrong and blew up everyone's phone. So um, we're making sure that we don't do that, um, making sure all the notifications look good, but all of our testing is looking really good on that. And you should see those rolling out over the next few weeks. Um, I think we're going to be spending quite a bit of time adding more notifications too. So you'll see the first round come out and then we're going to be adding more in like the weather ones. Um, yeah, that'll be super helpful. Um, any other ideas that y'all have? I mean, a lot of the things we add in this app come directly from your feedback. We listen to, we, we watch, we watch, I mean, we read every <laughs> single comment. We read every review, I, I promise you. And it goes through the whole team. Um, we screenshot it, put it into our team chat. We talk through it. We're always making changes based on, based on y'all's feedback. So um, please keep it coming. Um, we're going to start doing more of these live streams where we meet with y'all uh, at least once a month to show some of the things that we've changed, um, talk through some of the things that are coming, listen to your suggestions, answer questions. Um, if we missed any questions, please, uh, we'll, I'll follow up afterwards. I can come back and see the questions um, afterwards and follow up on there. But um, if not, reach out to, if I, if, I, if I don't give out to you, reach out to us, email us. Um, you, can, you can get to us through the app also if you come into here and you go to support and you come over to the support and help docs page. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff here, but if you come down to the bottom, you can fill out this form. That comes directly to us. Uh, I read most every, uh, our team reads every single one of them, and I personally read most all of them too. So um, I did not mean to turn that back on. I didn't know I could do that by double tapping on the window. <laughs> so I think we've gone over showing most of the new things that we wanted to show. Um, I'm probably going to be kicking myself for forgetting something later in the day, but I'm sure we'll come back and we'll have another one of these here soon. Yeah. And make sure you keep uh, tuned to our YouTube shorts. Carrie posts a lot of shorts that show these new features. So as they roll out, she makes little shorts that show that feature and stuff. She's been keeping up with that. So keep an eye on that. And they also go to Instagram and Facebook and all that kind of stuff too. So, and, and if TikTok. you're not in TikTok, <laughs> all of them. So if you're not following us on your favorite social platform, uh, please do. Um, it's all gardening and lighthearted stuff. Can I create my account on the computer? Um, you can create a app in my garden, but you cannot subscribe to the premium version on a computer. That can only be done right now from an iOS or an Android device. It is something we want to add in the future, but just not something we've been able to, to do yet. But you can still like log into an account and use it just how you would on the phone. Yeah. And if you sign up in like the iPhone or Android, then it syncs over to the web. So you'll still have all the premium features. Oh, good question here. What do you do about plants that fail? So, so what we typically do is um, you could either delete it or you could move it over. Oh, I'm not even sharing my screen. Let me get back to that. Okay, so if I come into my garden, and I don't want to curse any of our plants, but, you know, let's say this tomato doesn't make it. Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> so what I would do is come in here, and you could either archive it or delete it. If you want to archive it, just so you can remember what was that tomato that failed on me, um, you can. So once you archive it, then it goes into this archive tab here, and it's in this long list of plants here. Yep. So, and you Those can... are all my plants from last year. Yeah. If there's ways we can make archive better, let us know. Um, that's that's how we have archive set up now. Let's see if there's any other. Uh, so the question is about whether or not we could change the frequency notifications. Yeah, that's great. 
Yes. Uh, it's not going to be in version one of notifications, but it's something that we've planned for to come out and also allow you to potentially uh, change like your time of when the notification is sent and all that. We, we've been architecting it on the back end so that it can accommodate that. So version one is just going to be like Sunday, Tuesday. I'm sorry. Tuesday. Th now I forgot. It's Monday, Thursday, <laughs> Saturday. I'm not the one coding it, so don't worry. The coder knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that told him what days to do a few, like a month ago and then forgot. So. <clears throat> well, I think that's all that we had. Oh, another question. Okay, so filter for... So it's listening to the app, needing to container garden trying to find a filter for container garden or container plants plants that do well in a container so, i mean i will tell you technically though like pretty much everything there you can do in a container especially if it's a smart pot i, I mean we have i mean we even have some of our fruit trees and fruit bushes in our smart pots and they thrive they do really well um and they're yeah they're right here they're just these fabric raised beds and they do amazing and they're super easy to set up so Maybe. even for like the big stuff, we'll use these 25 gallon ones. Yeah. This is what we grow all of our potatoes in, um, a lot of our fruit trees and that okay. kind of stuff. So, um, but there's still things that we could probably do to like show things that are specifically yeah. and also like yeah. varieties, maybe. I don't know if we have the data easily accessible on that, but. Well, on um, description, like there are like container varieties for like tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, I know and... that for sure, but. On our YouTube, I know you've made a video that's all about growing in containers in small spaces, yeah. strategies around that. Yeah. So, Andrew, if you could find that video and post it into chat, please, just like on our Seed to Spoon YouTube channel, just container, patio. I think search for those two things. You'll be able to find it. Um, but that'll that'll give you some, some help, extra thoughts there, too. Okay, so another question here. Um, so the plants that are not in the app. So the way that you can add those is to come over here and to add custom plant. So if you come over to the plants list, then you can do add custom plant. And then you can add any plant you want that is not in the app. And any data that you enter in here will be used to any, all the calculations for planting dates and, and all that kind of stuff. I think there's also from here, is there? There's a way. Yeah, garden, if you add custom plant, plant right there. Yep. Yeah. So if you come into my garden and this add plant to garden right here, then... Uh, you can do the add custom plant right there. Yep, and that notification text is pretty much exactly what, what you're going to see. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, almost verbatim. We might just use that. Hey, you got stuff in your box that can be started. Let's <laughs> go do it. I like it. You're you're a good, <laughs> good writer. <laughs> you're hired. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Spurgeons. Um, here, I'll address this again. So reminders, um, reminders are going to be rolling out over the next few weeks and they're going to be coming out on uh, Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for now. And eventually we'll have the ability to customize the days. Um, but, um, but those will be rolling out and it's going to bring you into this view right here. So when you have things that are eligible for indoors or for outdoors, then that notification will be sent. It'll pull you into here. And, uh, and we're trying to be thoughtful in, in how no, how many notifications we send. We're trying not to be annoying about that. So three a week, just kind of nudging in your garden. And then uh, future notifications will be around um, weather events, like if it's going to be a freeze or a super hot day or something like that. We're going to send you notifications on that coming as well. So shout out to Justin, our lead developer. He's been working hard on notifications. Saw a bunch of notifications, test notifications come in over the weekend. So we are... Uh, we're really close to being able to roll that out. We're just making sure that it's right because a bunch of faulty notifications would be very annoying to y'all and we don't want to do that. So, well, I think that covers um, the stuff we wanted to show. I, I hope I answered all of the questions y'all had in chat. If not, again, please email us. Um, I showed how to get to us through the app. You can also email us at info at seedtospoon.net. Um, comment on any of our social posts, um, comment on this video. Um, just let us know. The point is, you know, uh, the point I'm trying to make is here is we want to hear from you and y'all are the reason this app has, um, has become what it is. 
we started this just for an app for ourselves, you know, six years ago, five years, a long time, 2016. Yeah. It's been so long. <laughs> and um, we never would have dreamed that it would have gotten to, to where it is now and that we'd be able to work on it every day like we do now. And like, this is our job. Like we're sitting on our couch in our living room talking to y'all for our job. <laughs> it's amazing. And thank you. And please continue to Send in your feedback. Let us know what kind of features you want to see. If there's something that we release you don't like, please tell us. Um, let us know, and um, we'll do our best to accommodate. So appreciate all of y'all joining us today. Uh, join us uh, next month, and for the next one, we'll do a contest. We thought about it right before, but we couldn't get everything together. So for the next live stream like this, make sure you join. We're going to do a contest, and uh, it'll be fun. Or you guys can just join for my next webinar. I do giveaways at each webinar. Yeah, so. we, we do webinars every Wednesday. So every, every other Wednesday. Every other Wednesday. Sorry. My See? goodness, you're trying to get I me know. more. I know. I really am. <laughs> so every other Wednesday. So this was our off Wednesday. So we did a, we did this live stream instead. <laughs> yeah. Usually our webinars are talking about plant stuff. <laughs> so things you can grow at the time, different um, stuff related to growing. Um, yeah. But we wanted to do more about the app too. Um, just to, we've seen some questions lately, you know, about some of the new features that we've added and just wanted to kind of give a demo of how we are using the features and all of that. So, okay. I think that's it. Yeah. Well, Thanks, thank everyone. Thank you so much for joining, everybody. Have a good rest of your week. Bye.